So uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Smitty Stop app and uh, I am still an excited technologist which claim that Denmark has a super weapon against COVID-19. And sort of my inspiration is South Korea, which is an Asian democracy with 51 million people, no lockdowns. And if we look at uh, how they have performed, they do have some waves when the COVID hits. This was the first big hit outside China. But even the largest waves are below the level we had during the summer in Denmark when we thought we were doing really great. But again, waves are there, they come and go, but they're uh, very small. Uh, sorry. Uh, but again, we do have a super weapon, but any weapon has to be installed and used. And this is where we so far fail. So before I came out of an advisory board, I had even been writing letters to the editor in newspapers, Berlings and Putin, I think, about absolutions. So my dream as a technologist is a society that is open and normal to everyone with a green app. A few people with a red app indicating recent contact with someone uh, with COVID should for a short period of time, typically a week or two, have to isolate. And this has been what South Korea has followed. And uh, they have only 500 deaths among 51 million people and no lockdowns, as I mentioned. I would have loved the situation where we also were nice rewarding the few people who had a red app, send them some champagne so they can enjoy their two weeks at home in isolation. Uh, maybe even more than that. Make sure they have food and everything like basically make it a reward because they're taking one for the team. They are uh, protecting the rest of us. But in Denmark, we chose alternative where everyone distances from everyone all the time. We have lots of restrictions, bar closing early. It's not a big issue for me anymore since I'm becoming older. Uh, only few people are allowed together in one place, a problem for weddings. And despite all these pains, we have 800 deaths among 6 million people. So we're doing more than 10 times worse. And I want to say that apps, are own, the strength of them is to catch transmissions with people who don't know each other. There are a lot of um, stupid journalists, sorry, I shouldn't say that, but I'm kind of arrogant, but there are a lot of journalists who say, well, the apps aren't catching that, that many uh, transmissions. Well, that's true. Most transmissions are within families and within clusters that know each other. But those are not a problem. They're very, very easy to trace with traditional contact tracing. The problem we have with COVID is when it jumps between clusters. This is where the problem is, and this is where the app helps help us. So even if it's not that many cases it can catch, it catches the important cases. Well, if it's used. Then, so these were all my dreams, and then uh, something fantastic happened because I normally just sit and complain in the sofa or writing us to the newspapers, but then I was called in to be on the advisory board for the Smitty Stop app. I was not the only one. We have Camilla Gregersen and Christian, Christina Weiler from uh, the Data Ethical uh, Council. We have Soon and me, who are professors in computer science. And then we have Jakob Herbst, who is uh, a technology officer uh, with security. And I use the colors just to indicate that we have different views. The two first from data, it is called, they say data is dangerous, privacy is the most important. Then we have Jakob Herbst, who is uh, selling that data dangerous and that he can help protect you. And then we have me and Soon, who sort of roughly speaking say data are very useful. Uh, so personally, I'm not talking for Soon now, I, I'm giving data to Google to help me navigate traffic. And I would certainly also be happy to give my health data to the Danish health authorities. I trust them for everything. I even have these cancer tests and whatnot, if that could help navigate Corona, which has scared me and is a big problem for my life. But when you join an advisory board, of course, you do not get to be a dictator. You have a mandate or some starting conditions. And these starting conditions says it has to be something preserving privacy. So you can't give all the data. I would like to give them everything personally, but it has to be such that the authorities don't learn anything about anyone. 
it has to be installed voluntarily. And also part of the deal is that Net Company develops the first version. They had already started developing the first Norwegian app. So one of the things we recommended to start with, and I think it was already in the cards, was to switch to the Google Apple API, which is privacy preserving and runs Bluetooth. So apparently in order to get Bluetooth to really work efficiently, it's good to be down in the low level so you don't have it falling asleep and stuff like that. And also the nice thing, sorry, I have problems with sofas, uh, is that it's becoming an international standard, which means that uh, we can actually use it internationally, not just in Denmark. One of the things we also asked for and which is happening, so the nice thing is actually listened to us was that the Smith stuff should be open source. And that has been a requirement in the new solicitation for the next version. So uh, net company is of course bidding on the next version. It's not sure they'll get it, but for sure it will be open source in the next round. And sort of a cute little thing is that now Norway is actually switching to the Danish app. So they are buying it. So at least it's becoming, if not international, then Scandinavian. So for those of you who don't know, let me just explain how it works uh, as privacy preserving. And this has in some sense been one of the main roles in the advisory board is just to explain to the, the logic behind um, preserving things, privacy information theoretically. So things about the work is that I will write the word volunteer, all these places where we need people to volunteer for anything to happen. So first of all, people have to install the app. That requires a modern phone, but then it takes less than five minutes. So when phones with Smithers stuff meet, they exchange random codes. And the point here, the privacy preserving point here is the codes your phone receives from others do not reveal who sent them. These are just randomly generated codes. Both phones remember the codes exchanged in this conversation. So if you test positive, you can voluntarily donate the random codes that your phone sent to others to pick aggregated list of infected codes. So important point here is you do not tell which random codes you heard from others. You only tell what you told us. You are not revealing any information about anyone but yourself. So then how do, does the messages get across? Well, all participating phones regularly download all infected codes and check for a match with codes that they have received from phones they talk with. So again, the point is that seen from the outside, all that happens is that all participating phones get this big list down, but nobody from outside can see who finds a map match. So basically the Google Apple API, they tells Smith stop or whichever application is running on top of them, what was the duration and the intensity of the contact. This is also logged together with the original logging of the codes. And then Smittestop decides whether to notify the user. So this is basically means that each country can set their own standards for how long duration should be, how close you should be, or now they discover that it spreads more easily if they're worried about super spreaders. They can change all these things. So it's like when you ask your doctor, should I tell my office mate, I didn't really see him that day, or how close have you been? So this kind of medical judgment is put into uh, Smittestop by a net company. The important thing is, again, it happens locally on the phone. Nobody from outside can see who finds a match and get notified. So this is a privacy preserving part. And it's very frustrating because we have done this and all the people who shouted, it's, we don't want to be watched or anything like that. They got exactly what they wanted. But I talked with the editor in chief of Ingenieuren, the engineering newspaper and First, Timo wrote this big article, we all get watched. And I said, well, it's not true. And then he asked me to explain it and it got explained on page five or whatever. And then I said, well, couldn't you please write a new editorial where you say that everything is okay? And he said, no, because then people will say, I'm changing my mind, so that's not worth it. So he stuck with his original editorial saying, be scared, don't use the app, even though it in fact is privacy preserving. This is also why we have people from this Data Aesthetics uh, Council to join us because we actually gave them everything they wanted to make this an attractive thing to install. Uh, and then of course, I forgot to say the last thing, we also need people to voluntarily get tested. 
get tested if they get a notification. So all this volunteer has to happen. Problems and hope. Well, the big problem is not enough installations. It's volunteer and it's like with the face mask, nobody uses them until it becomes a requirement. It's easier not to. And only one third of the population has installed them. Is there any hope at all? Well, the great thing is it can work locally. So within the KU, we have re recommended that everybody use Medistop, and it seems that they really do. Uh, at least uh, I know at DECU that the cases where people have been infected, it appears they have all had it installed, which is good. So we can get it to work locally, and if we can get all students to use it and students from other universities to use it, then we have a bit of the nightlife, and that would be a very good thing. Also, as long as people do not deinstallate, then at least we, it should be monotonely increasing the fraction that use it. And then some serious advertisement would go a long way. But yes, it is frustrating. We have tried to do everything people ask for and still way too few installations. Again, we need to have both people who meet uh, install it for it to get registered. Uh, my crazy idea, and this is not speaking as being on the panel, but just my personal thing is I would love if restaurant and bars required a green smitter stop for entrance. So only responsible people would get in. Then Corona would come quickly under control as in South Korea. Instead, the restaurant and bars have to kick everybody out at uh, 10 o'clock. Maybe some compromise would be that those who had a green app could stay till late and those without a green app would be kicked out at 10, then everybody got to choose exactly which world they want to live in. I want to be in the world with a green app where I'm free to party uh, till at least as I want. I'm kind of lying because at my age, I'm kind of happy being kicked home at 10, but that's a different story. Other problems and hope, annoying technical problems, partly because the privacy is such that no one knows what's actually happening. So debugging is not as simple as it used to be. People can't report what happened and say, why this, why that? Because nobody can see what's happening inside. With the Google Apple API, we have the advantage that the whole world is using and testing the system and reporting problems. And Google and Apple, are, Apple should be well qualified to fix them. They have good engineers. Smittestop is becoming open source, which should help getting uh, it debugged. And over time, the app should mature and harden like any other app. And uh, the most important thing is that we slowly get more and more people to use it. Then we have the problem that contact measures are imperfect. Uh, and there's a lot of political decisions weighing, should we have false positives or false negatives? How sensitive should it be? And what recommendations to give for people to get tested or to isolate. At the moment, they are saying, just get tested, don't isolate. Because if we want relatively many people to be notified to make sure we don't miss out on contacts, then we also don't want to ask for people to do too much. So it's one of these many compromises. Then finally, I just want to tell about my dream solution, which is a Corona app that's decentralized with location history, but privacy preserving. So the problem we have with uh, notifications with and without location history, if you use a Google Apple APA, API, all you get is you have been close to an infected. And we have all these measurement issues with false positives, et cetera. And how do people react if they keep getting such neutral messages with no what information whatsoever? I mean, to me, it's very much like Big Brother. You have been close to an infected. You know, you can't be to get any information about where and how. With location, you could be told it happened on the beach in the middle of the day or that it happened at the night at Barking Dog, one of the bars nearby. If you are given the context, then you can much better relate to the notification. Was there actually any chance of transmission on this beach? Or when you were in the bar, are you so drunk you don't remember what happened? Or do you even remember that you were mingling closely with a lot of people and sang uh, songs with them? So this will give you some context to decide if you should actually take this notification serious or not. So if you get tested, then it could, we could also learn something about where transmission happens. Does it happen inside or outside? That has been one of the big discussions. So this would give all the health authorities a lot of data they would love to have. But how can we make it so it's completely private, so that we don't reveal anything? Well, 
what I would like to see is just a completely private where was I app, where you just on your phone remember where you have been. So it should be really, really no cool and nice interface so you can easily look back and find out where did I forget my bike, my jacket or my bicycle. I typically forget my bicycle somewhere. And then you can just go back and see where I have it been and oh, now I remember it was at this station. And if you test positive for Corona, then you can look back and remember where you've been. For example, have you been with your hairdresser? So the point so far is that nobody from outside can see your private location history. So this is so far completely private. Now, now comes the sort of volunteering part. If you test positive, you can voluntarily donate the place, the time places where that where you would like to warn other people. So there's no need to tell about your private home because hopefully you know who has been visiting you. But you can just yourself decide which place, time places you want to donate. So if you say come from the Roskilde Festival, you might be happy sharing and warning people where you've been eating and where you've danced and listened to music, but maybe you don't want to tell anybody, everybody where you slept. Okay, and this is completely free. So if you have a nice interface, it's also easy to, like when you um, drop phone pictures on your phone, you just mark which pictures you want to share and which things you want to keep private. So then all these time places get on a big aggregated list of infected time places, but with no information about who was where. And then the private where was I apps, they regularly download these infected time places to see if there's a match. No one from the outside find out if a match was found. So this is using exactly the same idea as the Google Apple API, but instead of storing conversations, you store uh, your location history. Also the same idea that you, when you volunteer information, you only volunteer information about yourself. You only tell, I have been at this place at this time. You don't say anything about anybody else. So this is completely something you decide. So I love uh, my local bar and uh, if I got infected, I would like to make sure that everybody who had been there at the bar at the same time as me got a warning. So I would just put the warning out there. So the system was already running in a very inefficient way. So TV Laurie once told everyone who had been at Superviong at a certain date, date to stay home for 14 days. This is not very efficient. Instead of broadcasting each and every case in the national news, they could just add this thing to the list of infected time places. And then only those who had actually been there at that time and place would find out where using this where was I at. Okay, so you would just hit the relevant people. And again, this is a revealing exact information. I would reveal that there was an issue at this particular place at a certain day. But now you would even get the timing right. Are there problems? Yes. There are some risks of someone who will, will guess who has donated at a certain time place. Uh, if you have one big aggregated list of public places, this is not going to be easy, but it could happen. And this is a calculated risk that you decide whom you want to, not whom you want to warn, but you decide which time places you want to warn people about. And I, I would hope that most people would be proud to help warn others against getting the disease they just got. Other problems is location only really works in two dimensions. So it's best to just use on street level. It won't help in an apartment, but then again, people normally know whom they are with in an apartment. And street level suffices for all the important public spaces like restaurants, bars, public transport, all the places where you meet people you don't know because this is the only thing we really need the app for. It's not as precise as Google Apple API, but it gives this information about context, which I think is far more useful. And then I would hope that this Where Was I app would become popular just to help you find out where you forgot your bike and stuff like that. And I think one of the interesting things are the perspectives. So basically, a Where Was I app allows authorities to send out messages to people who have been at a certain time place where the authorities cannot find out who receives the message. So we just talked about corona infected time place, but it could also be super spreader time place, or it could be rate time place. Please call the police if you have seen something similar. So it's very much like a hashtag, but the hashtag is a time and a place. 
And if first you have a Where Was I app uh, installed, then you could subscribe to many different time space lists. It doesn't, or time place list. It doesn't have to be just Corona. So anyhow, this is my uh, uh, dream solution. I know it's not happening, but at least I have shared it with someone now. Uh, so thank you for your attention.